High Adventure. Tonight's story by Terence Kerwin is entitled A Life for a Life. Till. Yeah? You the new replacement? Uh, yes. Well, old Jessup didn't tell me a lime he would be taking over my job. How long have you been in Canada? I settled here with my family six weeks ago. <laughs> old Jessup, as you call him, didn't tell me it would be so cold here either when I <laughs> applied for the job. Well, wait until the snow comes, Father. You'll freeze to death in those English clothes. Take my tip, get yourself a real thick overcoat and earmuffs. You'll need them. By golly, you will. Oh, I'm shivering at the thought. How much experience have you had as a traffic control officer? Three years at an airport near Blackpool. Been here 15 years now. Gotta like the old place, though. Gets real busy sometimes. Six planes a day. How's that? Oh, not bad. The one in England got eight. So I beat you. <laughs> I guess you do at that. But uh, did you ever get a real way out emergency happen up there? Well, not really. Uh, of course, we had the odd excitement now and then, like guiding planes down in a fog, but nothing much else. Something tells me, though, you've had a real weirdy, as I called them back home. Am, am I right? Yeah, you sure are, father. Come on, I'll tell you about it over a cup of coffee. We've got a canteen here. It's not much, but it makes good coffee. Interesting. Well, you bet. Oh, be glad to hear anything I can about the place, seeing I'll be working here. Okay. Hey, take over, Harry. I'm off now. Hey, watch out for Doc Stevens. He's doing any time now. Okay, Ed, you leave it to me. Now we'll take that alcove seat over there, more private. Well, like our coffee? Yes, it's fine. But, but it's rather different from what I drank back home. <laughs> you bet it is. I was always telling my old ma she hadn't a clue how to make coffee, well, Canadian style. Well, she learned, bless her, in the end. Ah, oh, now about the story. Once in a while, exciting things did happen, in spite of me calling the airport a one-eyed dump. Like guiding planes down in snowstorms, but... Nothing so odd as this story I'm going to tell you. Why so odd? Well, a life hung in the balance, and a plane, too. And all because of a fishbone. Fishbone? Oh, sounds really intriguing and nothing like we had back home. Oh, go on. I, I'm all ears, as they say. Okay. Now, this story began about five years ago in the backwoods. Doc Stevens could have told it better, but seeing he's not here and sort of touchy about it, I'll do my best. He's a flying doctor around these parts. Oh, I've met him. A nice bloke, but very quiet. He doesn't have much to say. Yeah, he's... Been like that ever since this incident happened. Thor blames himself. Not true, of course. I mean, it wasn't his fault, no, sir. It was the cussed weather and this fishbone. You see, it was a call he should have made earlier, but he couldn't make it. He knew, oh, he knew all about it. So did I. I was on duty at the time. It began simply enough. The Moran family. They're Irish trappers about a hundred miles from here. They were having their breakfast. Can I come with you today, Pa? Now finish your porridge, son, and we'll see. Not today, son. The heavy snows are due any time now, and the going will be rough. Must you go, dear? Can't the traps wait till tomorrow? The radio said the weather would be clear by then. No, Lena, I got to go. Those darn wild dogs will ruin the fur if I don't. I won't be away for long, and the sooner I start, the better. Gosh darn it, it's after six now. Where's my rifle? Here, dear. Ah, uh, thanks, dear. Now, where's that Ted? He promised to be here by six. Oh, it's starting to snow real bad, Ken. Maybe you won't come. Uh, he's got to come. Darn it, those skins will be ruined if we don't get to him in time. You said that before, dear. You always repeat yourself when you're worried. So why go? I'm worried about my furs, Lena, not the blasted weather. I must make up for last month. I lost some fine skins. Oh, I think he's coming now. Oh, yes, it's him. Oh, good. 
Now, do finish up your breakfast, Larry, or you won't grow up big and strong like your pa. Ah, oh, gee, Ma, can I go with Pa? I won't get in the way. I said no, son. Maybe next time. It's starting to snow fits a blind a mule, Kean. You think we should go? There's a sensible man. Hiya, Ted. Hiya, Lena. And how's young Larry? Fine, Uncle Ted. Pa says I can't come with you. Your pa's right, young feller. It's too windy out there. Not to mention the snow drifts that'll be forming. You get swallowed up in no time. Ah, oh, gee, Uncle Ted, you're as bad as Pa. <laughs> now, that's enough, young man, or I'll send you to your room. Now, give me your plate. I bet your porridge is stone cold. No, it is, Ma. It's just fine. Now, let me see. Of course it's cold. I'll warm it up and you can finish it when your Pa and Uncle Ted have left. Are you ready, Ted? Yeah, let's go. Ah, goodbye, honey. I'll see you later. I'll look after Larry. I will, dear. Hurry back. I hate these snowstorms. Makes one feel so cut off. Thank heavens we got Doc Stevens when we meet him. Yeah, but if the weather gets any worse, a bird wouldn't get through. Let alone a plane. But as you say, thank heavens for the duck and the radio. Did you check it was working okay before you left? Heck no. Oh, oh it'll be okay. I used it yesterday and it was all right. Now, where shall we make for first? Beechwood? I'm easy. We might as well. We usually get our best catches there. If it gets any worse, though, I I reckon we'll skip the traps by the river. Okay with you? Okay by me. Now, let's move it while we can. I don't like the look of those clouds over there. You're right. Let's hurry it up and get back. Is lunch ready, Ma? I'm hungry. Go and sit at the table. It's ready now. And don't let it get cold like your breakfast. Ah, oh, gee, Ma, I ate it, didn't I? Yes, dear. Eventually. Now, sit down. Mmm. Oh, sure, tasty, Ma. <laughs> good boy. Eat it all up. It'll do you a power of good. Makes brain, they say. Ah, oh, gee, Ma, are you kidding? No, I'm not, son. True is true. I read it in a book someplace. <coughs> What's wrong, Larry? <coughs> I, I think I've got something stuck in my throat, Ma. Here, quick. <coughs> eat some bread. <coughs> that better? Is it gone? Oh, no, Ma. It's made it worse. I think it's a fish bone. Oh, but it can't be, son. I fill it at the fish real careful like. Well, it is a fish bone, Ma. I can feel it. <coughs> <coughs> Oh, it hurts awful, Ma. Let me look. Open your mouth. Oh, I, I can't see anything. No, no, no. Keep still, son. While I try and get it out. Oh, oh it's gone further down, Ma. I, I can't breathe so good. I want my paw. I want my paw. Oh, heavens. Oh, dear heavens. D don't worry, son. I'll radio for Doc Stevens. He'll know what to do. This is WXY4 calling Haybert Airport. WXY4 calling Haybert Airport. Doc Stevens, please. This is an emergency. WXY4 calling Haybert Airport. Do you read me? Over. More? More? I can't breathe. It hurts. I can't breathe. Try and remain calm, son. I'll, I'll try again. This is WXY4 calling Haven Airport. WXY4 calling Haven Airport. Do you read me? This is an emergency. Over. Mar. Mar. Help me. Help me, Mar. I'm choking. <coughs> I'm choking. I, I'll get help for you, Larry, son. Just, just hold on a little longer. I can't hold on much longer, Mar. <coughs> I want my bar. WXY4. <laughs> Call in Haber Airport. WXY call in Haber Airport. Do you read me? Do you read me? What is wrong? Answer me, please. Oh, please, answer me. Over. Oh, Larry. Larry! Oh, no. He's unconscious and his face is tinged with blue. He's, he's dying. I, I know it. I know it. Well, that's a lot in Beachwood Grove. Good catch, eh, Keen? Yeah, but let's go back, Ted. Why? We're, we're doing fine. I don't laugh, Ted, but I, I have a feeling that something's wrong back home. But, but come on, we must turn back. Now, hold on, fella. Me and young Larry are okay. It's just your superstitious Irish blood running wild. I tell you it's not. 
You go on ahead if you want to, but I'm turning back, and now. Okay, fella, calm down. We'll go back. Hurry up, Ted. We must go faster. All right, all right. I'm going as fast as I can. Look out, Ken! Ah! Oh. You okay, Ken? Uh, yeah, I, I think so. I, I, I busted my ankle in this dratted snowdrift. Uh, help me out, Ted. Hold on. Careful now. Grab my rifle. You got it? Yeah. Right. Okay, here goes. Is the... Is the ankle broken? No, I... I, I don't think so. Just, just badly sprained by the feel of it. But look, you go on ahead. Not on your life, pal. You'll... You'll freeze to death if I leave you here. Come on now, come on. Lean on my shoulder. Thanks. I'm leaving the first. They're too heavy to carry. Oh, hurry, Ted! Hurry! Flower Connection has just opened their flagship store in Linden, Johannesburg, at 65 on 4th, situated in 4th Avenue. For fresh cut flowers, plants, and florist accessories at wholesale prices, come to Flower Connection. Call Jenny on 076-951-9449 or visit our website at www.flowerconnection.com. Looking for space to hang and dry your washing? Washline distributors have the solution. Their rotating and fold-down wash lines take up the smallest spaces. Ideal for townhouses, simplexes and balconies at affordable prices. Galvanized or powder coated and available in five different colors. For 24-hour delivery, installation, reliable and friendly service, phone Washline Distributors on 011-792-2486. That's 011-792-2486. Wash lines for every space and need. WSY4 calling Haven Airport. WSY4 calling Haven Airport. This is an emergency. I repeat, an emergency. I want the flying doctor. Can you read me? Over. WXY4 call. WXY4 call. Why could you answer me, Haver Airport? This is an emergency. I Who repeat. Who are you? You're jamming my frequency. Please get off the air. I repeat, please get off the air. You can't get off the air. My son is dying and needs a doctor. I'm trying to get in touch with the flying doctor at Haver Airport. Dr. Stevens? Yes, yes. Now, please get off the air. This is an emergency. I can't. For some reason, we're locked in each other's frequency. Duck Stevens couldn't help you anyway. The weather's too bad. I can't see a yard in front of you. Oh, it's snowing something shocking. Hey, well, wait a bit. Aren't you Lena Moran? Uh, I recognize your call sign. Yes, I'm Lena Moran. Who are you? I'm Art Linton. Remember me? I know you have me. Oh, yes, I do. And, and you know about first aid. Oh, you must tell me what to do. My Larry is dying. And so will I if I don't get in touch with the airport. My landing gear won't work and I must be guided in. It won't take long for you to tell me what to do. Oh, please, Art. I've no one else to help me. Kian is out seeing to his trucks. Oh, for heaven's sake, help me, Art. Oh, all right. Now, what's the trouble, Lena? Larry's got a fishbowl stuck in his throat and he can hardly breathe. Well, that needs a doctor. Oh, for pity's sake, not a guy who only knows first aid. The trachea is a, is a dicey thing to operate on. What's the trachea, Art? The throat cleaner. I'm, I'm sorry, but I can't help you. Oh, but you must. Larry is dying. I tell you, he's choking to death. And I tell you, he needs a doctor. You'd never be able to do the operation. One mistake and you'd kill him for sure. Now, I'm sorry to be so brutal, Lena, but it's the truth. Now, get off the air. My fuel's running out. I won't get off the air until you tell me what to do. You saved little Robbie Watson who was run over by a car. That was different, Lena. And you know it. For one thing, I was on the spot, not a hundred miles away in a crippled plane. No, Lena, I can't help you. Oh, the blast, and I, I'm helping you to commit darn near murder. Do you want his death, 
on your conscience because you refuse to help. That's darn near murder to me, Art. You plead to death that you cut an artery by mistake. Operations on throats don't come under first aid, Lena. Can't you see that? Oh, I can't. Oh, please, Art, help me. Help me. <laughs> Did you hear that, Art? Did you? All right, Lena. Now calm down. Getting hysterical won't help. I'll do my best to help you. Now, for a start, is his face turning blue? Yes, a little. Yeah, well, that's something. If it was really blue, we wouldn't stand a chance. Uh, how's his breathing? Is it wheezy, rapid, and shallow? Yes. Now, what shall I do? Oh, hurry, Arthur, please, hurry. I said calm down, Lena. You'll not save Larry if you panic and get hysterical. Now, this arm will need real calm nerves. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, Arthur. Then calm now. Please go on. Good. Now, have you a sharp knife? And I mean sharp. Yes, the one I use for cutting vegetables. I, I always keep it clean. Will that do? It'll have to, Lena. But first, sterilize it in boiling water. When you've done that, come back to me. But hurry, Lena. My fuel is running out fast. Bless you, Arthur. I, I'll hurry, I, I promise. Put the knife in boiling water. Thank heavens the water was already on the stove. Right. Now go and pull back the skin on his throat until you can see the ridges. Now come back to me when you've done that. Oh. Art? Well, Lena, done it? Yes. I, I could see the ridges. But his face is becoming real blue now, Art. Oh. Yes, I did. Right. We'll just have to hope that the fishbone will be above that. Now pull the skin tight again and carefully cut along that ridge below the Adam's apple. You'll be able to breathe then. Won't you bleed a lot and choke? No, no, not a lot. You must cut across the throat. If he does bleed a lot, press on the area where the blood is. That should slow it down. Okay. Now, go and make the incision, Lena. Now remain calm. But hurry back when you've done it. I will, Art. I will. I promise. Oh, dear heavens, let, let me do this right. Oh, dear, I, I can't hold the knife. It's too hot. Where's the clean bandages? You have to calm, Lena. Calm. Remember what Art said. Remain calm. Got them. Now, cover the knife handle. That's better. Pull the skin back. Yes. There's the ridge. I, I can't do it. I can't do it. But I must. I must. Do you want Larry to die, you little fool? For pity's sake, no. Are you doing it? I will. I've done it. His face is regaining its color. Oh, heaven be praised. <gasps> He's bleeding heavily. <coughs> He's choking. Oh, I, I must stop it. I must. Oh, what did Art say? Oh, yes. Press around the wound. The bleeding's stopping. Oh, heavens. The wound is closing up. Oh. Art! Art! The wound's closing up! He can't breathe properly again! The snowstorm's getting worse, Ted. We'll never make it in time. We will, feller, we will. I hope you're right. I am. Now cool off. Cool off? I'm darn near frozen walking at this speed. I must try and go a little faster. Now ease off, Keen. You'll only stumble and maybe break your ankle. Then we will be in a real fix. How is it, by the way? Any worse? It's not too good, Ted. But walk faster. I'll keep up somehow. 
I know something's wrong back at home. The feeling is overwhelming me now. Oh, easy, fella, easy. We're making good time. It's only a few more miles to go. A few more miles. We haven't a hope, then, unless we move faster. It's Larry. I know it. Something's happened to him. Now calm down, Kian. You're making yourself ill with needless worry. They'll both be okay, I tell you. You're wrong, Ted. Lena, me, and Larry are a pretty close family. I've had this feeling before, you know. When? Last August, when Larry cut his face under his left eye. Yeah, I remember. It, it was a pretty close thing. It sure was. Another fraction of an inch, and it would have been a main artery. Doc Stevens fixed him up real good. No scar. Don't tell me you knew about that. I sure did. Buried the furs and went back home like a scalded wildcat. Of course, I, I wasn't needed. Doc Stevens had already left. But the feeling of disaster was there, Ted, all the same. And this time there'll be no Doc Stevens on account of this blasted weather. I see what you mean. Maybe you've got second sight or something. I think I have. I know my old ma had, way back in Ireland. Folks would come for miles to have their future read. Of course, she, she never told them the bad things. Like when she knew young Kevin O'Connor was going to die. Kept that to herself. And told me about it years later. Ah! Are you all right? I, I, I think so. I... Are you sure we're going the right way? I can't see a yard in front of me with this blasted snow. We're going the right way. Leave it to your old pal. Yeah, like last time. We got lost, remember? Ah, gee, Kian, I only did it once. Yeah, but this time, I tell you, it'll be once too many. We'll be too late to now, say Now, don't Larry. say that. You make me feel real bad. I, I, I tell you, you're dreaming it all up in spite of your ma's talents. You'll see. We'll get to your place to find them snug around the fire. Lena drinking coffee. Young Larry having a hot chocolate the way he likes it. You want a bet? No, Ted. This time I'll not take up your offer. I know you're wrong. Now let me try and move faster. I tell you it was pretty horrible for me, Mr. Bush. Call me Ray. In what way was it horrible? Well, Ray, I, I could hear Lena talking to Art and couldn't do a cussed thing about it. The frequencies were good and proper locked into each other. Never known it happened before. Couldn't you tell Doc Stevens to get over to the Moran home? You've got to be kidding, feller. The snow was coming down like a solid wall. I mean, couldn't see a darn thing. I sweat it, I can tell you. Knowing I was going to have one real bad time getting Art down when he stopped circling the airfield. How long had he got before his fuel gave out? Oh, by my reckoning, about ten minutes, maybe less. Certainly not long enough to get guided down and make a belly landing. I just listened to it all. Horrified. There was nothing else I could do. Of course, we'd cleared the airfield, waiting. What shall I do, Art? The wound's closing up again. Calm down, Lena. You just have to open it up again. But a bit more this time. You find it easy to do. It's cartilage, not bone. Oh, all right. I'll do it. Hurry, Lena. My fuel's just about all gone. Okay, I won't be long. I've done it, but I'm sure it'll close up again. Have you any plastic tubing? I, um, uh, I think so. Yes, we have. Kian bought some for the car, for petrol. Or Is it clean and unused? Yes. Right. Now put it in the boiling water and then carefully insert the tubing into the wound. Not too far, Lena. You may do more harm than good. What was that noise? You're on your own, Lena. That was my engine. Uh, I'm out of fuel. Goodbye. Uh, goodbye, Art. And bless you for all you've done. Yes, Larry. Dead. Did Larry die? No. 
That tubing kept him going until Doc Stevens got over there. The snow cleared a couple of hours later. And Art Linton? He died, Ray. Crashed a hundred yards from the airfield. The Morans named their second child after him. Art Linton Moran. Didn't help Doc Stevens, though. No, sir, he never got over it. But it wasn't his fault. Oh, we all know that, and so does he. But it makes no difference. You see, Art Linton was his half-brother who was coming to see him. They were like twins, as they say. High Adventure is produced by Henry Duffenthal.